Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. I hope you're keeping safe and I hope you're keeping sane. Now this is going to be one of a series of videos which I've been meaning to sort of make and um, continue on for quite some time about gambling debt. What I'm going to talk about in this first part is my personal gambling debt. Um, how much I borrowed, where it came from, how I got the credit in the first place. And then I'll go on to talk about the different types of debt, how to go about repaying it, whether you do have to repay it, and my experience in dealing with both creditors, debt collectors and the like. It's very important to mention at the forefront of this video that this is not financial advice. It does not constitute financial advice and it should be not be taken as such. This is purely my journey with gambling, with money, with debt and with financial and gambling recovery uh, and how I've dealt with it, what I've found along the way. Um, this, of course, is specific to me um, and it is based on gambling debt. However, it'd be remiss not to acknowledge that people may have come here because they have different forms of personal debt. And uh, the recovery, you know, the, the process of recovery is going to be pretty similar regardless of what got you into this situation in the first place. First thing to mention if you're here for gambling debt is that once you deal with the gambling, the debt will generally start to take care of itself. So if you're here because you want to quit gambling, then that's great. Make sure that is taken care of before you even start to worry about the financial implications. If you start to get too concerned, too wrapped up in the financial implications of recovery, if you start to get too worried, too stressed about the debt you have, the money that you owe, then that will force you to go and seek solace, to seek escapism in a crutch. And as gambling addicts, of course, our crutch, our form of escapism is indeed the very thing that got us into this situation in the first place. So before I talk about my own personal debt, it's very likely you may have come to this video off the back of a significant loss, or you may have finally reached that limit where you're no longer able to borrow to cover up your losses. And I would say don't panic. That is my advice, and although it sounds much easier to give than to receive, it's worth noting that regardless of who you owe money to, there is almost certainly an element of breathing space that you will be afforded. And if you make sure that... Firstly, your priority debts, which are your council tax, your rent, basically anything that you know uh, keeps a roof over your head. Make sure they are your priority. Everything else can wait. I'll go on to talk about dealing with creditors in a later video. So how did I manage to accrue this debt? Well, the, obvious, the, the short answer, of course, is gambling, gambling losses. But it didn't happen overnight. The first major... Um, borrowing that I did was a substantial loan from the bank. Now this actual loan was taken out with a view to purchasing a very specific car that I had seen that I wanted to buy. I took out the loan, in fact I took out more than the car, was you know, more money than was required for the car, thinking oh, I'll have a little bit left over, which is you know stupid young Phil financial mistake number one. However by the time the loan came through it didn't take too long but the car had sold, so I thought well I'll leave the money in the bank and then I'll have a look for another vehicle, you know, something comparable that you know I could buy. Now, at this point, I was gambling. It didn't get, wasn't at its worst point, but certainly it was at a point that needed addressing. Uh, I wasn't in a position, or indeed in a mindset, or did indeed did I want to address it at this juncture? But I certainly something that was getting out of control. And this sudden influx of available liquid capital in the form of, you know, twenty whatever thousand pound it was sat in my current account enabled me to maybe indulge more than I should in multiples of harmful activities, gambling being the most pronounced, um, and certainly the other harmful activities that I might have been partaking in weren't necessarily helping the cause and maybe even motivating or triggering factors to my increased level of gambling. So very soon this bank balance that I had, whilst it hadn't been depleted, it had dropped below the level I needed to fulfil its original purpose. I now had an inflated bank account above and beyond what I'd had at any point in my life previous. However, I didn't have the money required to buy the car that I initially wanted to buy. Um, for anyone who's interested in cars, I wanted to buy a new Nissan 350Z at the time. Um, they were not quite new out, to be honest, and I thought they were quite uh, something quite special. So I wanted to get one of them. But anyway, after um, having the money set in my account for a, a couple of months or whatever, it was no longer at a level where I was able to go and buy the car I wanted to buy. So now I was in a quandary. I couldn't just repay the loan. I couldn't buy what I originally taken the money out to buy. And I had a surplus of available funds in a bank account. Now, for someone with multifarious addictions, with gambling being the most pronounced, the most significant and the most harmful, that money was earmarked for doom. It was, uh, 
you know, once it was in my account, it was it was never going to make it back out in any kind of constructive way. So fast forward, however, lot many months or whatever, and that money had all but gone. By this point, obviously, the additional available funds had, um, you know, pushed my gambling addiction to the next level, so to speak. It exacerbated what was always a, a, a problem that was bubbling underneath the surface. And once that money dried up, the, the addiction had got, you know, full hold of me, really. And I wanted to continue to gamble in the way that I'd now become accustomed at the levels to which I'd now become accustomed. The, the problem was, of course, that while I was working at the time and actually earning a, a reasonable whack of money, the money I had coming in wasn't able to adequately fund the addiction, not once um, all my expenses had been paid out. So what did I do? Well, obviously, I continued to borrow as the uh, title of this video and the, uh, the basis of the theme of this series uh, would imply. And like I say, it started from a substantial uh, bank line. Um, it moved on to a largely extended overdraft. I think I extended my overdraft about £5,000. Um, it then proceeded to be smaller loans from alternative lenders who would lend me money, uh, then credit cards, then all the others. So your, your payday lenders, your all the, the really dodgy shit. Because ultimately what happens is as you build up debt, your credit rating starts to take a bit of a hit, particularly if you start missing payments. And then you're only able to borrow money from less and less reputable places. And when you borrow money from less and less reputable places, particularly at that time when it was largely unregulated, is that the interest rates, the APRs go through the absolute roof, repayment schedules are incredibly incredibly punitive, and you miss more and more payments, which lead to greater and greater interest and fees, and you end up in a spiral of debt. And I would say at that time, it was relatively un, more, um, unregulated. Um, certainly the payday lenders and such hadn't been fully investigated in the way they now have been, which has obviously led to some of the largest ones folding um, and maybe we just say uh, good rinse to them. Um, but anyway, I ended up in a substantial amount of debt. Now, to this day, I couldn't tell you exactly at the worst point how much that was. My estimate would be that it was probably somewhere between forty to fifty thousand pounds. But like I said, I didn't have an exact figure at that point. At that point, I literally felt like I didn't know what to do. I couldn't literally pay the, the you know the ever escalating interest on the loans, let alone start touching the capital. And I was at possibly one of the lowest points in my life. The stress that this was causing me was untold. Uh, I probably had a full head of hair before that started, but uh, there you go. Um, the stress was untold. Uh, paydays were futile because so much money was going out as soon as I got paid. Uh, I was still desperate to gamble uh, and was scrimping, saving, beg, stealing and borrowing uh, from anywhere I could to help um, satisfy the, the gambling urges but all the time this debt was increasing and was basically loitering like the sort of Damocles over my head ready to come sort of crashing down in ways that at this point I don't really even want to consider because it could be that I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys today but the moral of this story is I am sitting here talking to you guys today. I do still have some underlying debts which I'm managing and paying off sort of regularly in an affordable way. I did get through that situation. I did come out to the other side. Um, and if I knew now what I knew then, no, that's not right. If I knew then what I know now, then actually I may still have a few more hairs on my head, uh, a few less pounds around my waist and a few less wrinkles uh, below my eyes um, because I shouldn't have panicked in the way I did. I shouldn't have felt that feeling of impending doom. If you're watching this video because you feel like you're drowning in debt, be that through gambling or another addiction or for something else entirely, if you feel that it's unmanageable, then I'm here to assure you it is manageable. I won't go into too much detail now because I say I'm going to make this into a series, but what I would say is this. Make sure your rent, your council tax are paid. Okay, make sure you've got food in the cupboard. Make sure your other, um, you know, any dependents are taken care of and anything that is requirement for you to live a comfortable life, not a, an affluent life, but a comfortable life, make sure they're taken care of. The creditors can't get money or will, with a few simple steps will not be able to get money that you cannot afford to give them. 
There will be breathing space. There is ways to achieving breathing space. You'll have more time than you think you have to start to put a plan in place. And once your creditors, whoever they might be, realise that you are unable to pay them the amounts that they're asking for you from you, they will want to get something from you. So they will work with you in order to set up means by which you can pay them back either at a later date, at a lesser rate or whatever. It is sortable. So even if you're situation feels completely hopeless i am here to assure you from someone who has been there and has had those feelings and has those thoughts that it can be dealt with it can be managed and you can come out the other side it might be you are to some extent paying debts back for maybe the rest of your life okay which sounds horrible it sounds daunting but if they are at a manageable level it doesn't matter and that is what we'll come on to in future videos if you are struggling straight away um, try uh, citizens advice uh, maybe able to help with emergency loans crisis loans that sort of thing and um, if you are unable to pay your rent or your mortgage then get in touch with either the mortgage lender or your landlord explain the situation and explain that you do intend to pay it get that resolved get anything that is owed to HMRC or something like council tax get those you know communicate with those authorities communicate with those bodies let them know that you do plan to pay it um, at the, you at the moment you are financially um, in, a, in a bad financial spot um, but you, you are looking to address it okay you will get breathing space but address those first and in future videos I'll tell you how I dealt with um, other creditors other lenders debt collectors the whole lot all the letters the phone calls which I'm sure you're invariably getting if you got to the point I got to they can all be managed they can all be dealt with and you will come out the other side more than ever stay safe and sane Okay, if you are having the sort of thoughts I had when I was at my lowest ebb, check out the, the numbers in the description of this video. Okay, Samaritans, if you need immediate help, they are amazing. Um, help with gambling advice, um, immediately check out people like Gamcare. Of course, I've got lots of videos up here talking about gambling addiction, talking about gambling recovery, but I, as I always say, and as I said at the start of this video, I am not... An expert do not rely on me if my videos help supplement your recovery or you get some sort of useful information or at the very least it makes you feel like you're not alone and that's brilliant and thank you for watching and i do appreciate it and i hope it helps but i'm, I'm not the first port of call for debt advice nor am i the first port of call for um any issues surrounding your mental health particularly if you're considering sort of self-harm or anything like that okay so get the appropriate help I will continue this video series, um, hopefully get at least another one out before the end of the week, and we'll start to manage the debts that you have and explain how to buy breathing space, how to manage the debt, and ultimately set out a path so you can live a comfortable life in the future and not have that sort of Damocles hanging over your head. As I say, stay, stay, stay safe and sane, easy for me to say, and I'll catch you very, very soon. All the best.